Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we're going to do a photo with a frame in the frame. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And we are in Paris just in front of the Eiffel Tower with a group of photographers who is here for the Paris in Spring workshop. I make two tutorials per week. If you want to get them every week, just click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to get the raw file of this episode and all the past episodes, just click here and you will get this and hundreds of raw files from all over the world. All right, so in last episode, I showed you a black and white technique for a New York panorama shot. That's the final result. All right, so in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can uh, frame in the frame. What does that mean? That means that you find an element like buildings, trees, and you try to make a frame, a natural frame in the frame. And so I'm going to show you different techniques and different compositions. I'm going to try different shoots and see which one gives the best. The only problem with that is that we have the sun coming down on the Eiffel Tower. And so it's a lot brighter than here. So I might take two shots, one for the building, the frame, the foreground, and one uh, for the Eiffel Tower, and then we mix both in Photoshop. We'll see if that's in it. Okay, so over to Lightroom, I'm going to show you what I shot. All right, so today I'm going to retouch some photos from my friend Mohamed Mirza, who uh, shot as part of my Paris in Spring workshop this very nice photo of the Eiffel Tower. And the whole idea of this photo was to create a frame in the frame meaning that we have the Eiffel Tower in the middle and we have the surrounding buildings and what we want to have is uh, yeah just the idea of the buildings being a natural frame the problem with that is uh, with the eyes you can see the frame in the frame but the camera doesn't see that the camera will only correctly expose either the Eiffel Tower or correctly expose the buildings but not both so you can use HDR, you can use digital blending. I want to go for a non-HDR look type of photo, so I'm going to use what we call digital blending. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, so we've got two photos. If I press on I, we can see that Mohammed shot this at 1 25th of a second at F, uh, F8, ISO 100, 24 millimeter. And the third one he shot at 1 6th of a second at F8, ISO 100. So this is an actually a longer exposure uh, than this one. So this one is a bit brighter than this one. So the one which is darker, I'm going to retouch just with a viewpoint of the Eiffel Tower and the sky. I'm not caring so much about the buildings. So, but I'm still going to do my usual workflow. I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Now I could try to play around and get everything right with one row file. The problem with that is I might get row file. I mean, this is a D800. So it's a pretty much, it's a good quality camera, but it's always better to use digital blending because you just get a more natural result. So let me put this back. So I'm just gonna open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. You can see the photo is still very dark. Uh, what I wanna do is I'm looking at this. So on the white balance, I think I'm just gonna go on a sort of like daylight and just add a bit of magenta, something like that, because I add magenta everywhere. Maybe it's a bit dark. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Now, of course, I would uh, you know just add a little bit of clarity, and uh, but I want this to be brighter. I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of this. There's a lot of work to be done on this photo, so it's it's not just a digital blending trick. All right, uh, maybe just add a bit of vibrance to make it pop. I really want you know dramatic skies. He he got amazing uh, you know skyline here and nice clouds. I want to respect that. The clouds needs to be respected. Make it a bit brighter. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go to sharpening. I'm going to sharpen this photo to about 100. And I don't think there's much noise. Yeah, there's no, I can see in this little window, there's not much noise on, on the sky. It's a D800. It's really good camera. Nice raw files. So I'll just maybe do just a little 10 noise and 90 sharpening. Oops, 90. And uh, let's do the mask. You don't want to. You don't want to sharpen the, the clouds, or you don't want to sharpen the sky. So for this, all you have to do is press Alt. And on Lightroom or Camaro, using the masking tool, if you go to the right, anything which is going to get black is not going to get sharpened. So we don't want to sharpen the sky. All right. So this way, we've got a nice, you know, non-noisy, non-sharpened sky, uh, and that's pretty good. 
So now what I'm going to do is select the first, oh, one last thing, very important, is on the battle profile correction, look at this, and look this new option, the upright function, which I love in Lightroom. You see how the buildings are crooked and how it's not straight. I just click on auto and boom, it's all straight. I love that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select what he did, select the second photo and just click on think, synchronize and I'm synchronizing everything that he did on this one. I'm looking at it, and this one I'm gonna look at it just looking at the buildings. Now the buildings have the same color because I've synchronized the white balance and everything, but they're too bright. So I'm just gonna make it darker. Okay, I mean, you can, it's already pretty nice, you know, but I think I'll get a, a bit of a better result if I use these buildings. But the problem is that he moved between t the two photos. So now we've got two photos, one for the sky and one for the buildings. This one, I know the buildings are very clean there. There's no noise and it's a very good quality. So I'm gonna right click, now that's a selected edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. That way it's gonna open Photoshop and each file is gonna be on its own layer. All right, so let's go jump into Photoshop. Now it's open in Photoshop. The first layer that we're gonna call sky is the one that, uh, that has a nice sky and the Eiffel Tower. And the second one, the one that's beneath, is the one for the buildings. The problem is that they are not aligned. So that's the first thing. If, if you click here, you can see it's moving. So how to align them, you just select both. You go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, Auto, OK. That way it's gonna make sure that they are totally aligned, and that's very, very important. Okay, now it's aligned. You see if I do off and on, it's exactly perfectly at the same place. Now, I'm gonna create a mask and I'm gonna take a brush, B for brush, make sure my brush is black because I have a white mask and I'm gonna paint about 50% opacity. All I'm trying to do is bring, well, maybe more, I'm just gonna bring back some of the buildings, of the clean buildings, the proper exposed building that he did. It's not making a huge difference on this photo, that's because it's a D800. And it's also, at the same time, I'm complexing the light. But this way, I've got best of both worlds, which is pretty cool. So, if you've got a camera that's not as powerful than Mohammed, like a D800, uh, believe me, you need to master that technique if you want to do this, uh, this uh, frame in a frame, because you always have the trouble that the buildings will be looking very dark and the sky will be very bright, or the reverse. This, this is how you correct that. Now we are not finished with this photo, so I'm gonna set Command E to merge everything. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna use the crop tool. So here, you see the little motorbike, so I, I don't want to take it, I'm just gonna crop here and I'm gonna crop maybe just a bit here and a bit here because that's some stuff from the alignment. But now I got a problem. I've got this big stop sign that's really ruining the photo. I mean, it's really bad. So for this, what I'm gonna do is use different techniques and it's, it's really like a trial and error process. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste that window here. And for this, I'm gonna use the pen tool. P for pen tool, and I'm gonna make a selection of that window. Okay. A rough selection of the window. I'm gonna right click, make a selection, and I'm gonna make the feather actually even more. I'm gonna make a 10 feather radius pixel selection. Why? Because you, when you do that, now that selection is not a very clear selection, it's a feather selection. So if I press Command G, uh, Command G is going to put that selection on its own layer. Let me show you with holding the Alt key. You see, but it's all blurry around that selection. That way, if I press, if I take the Move tool and, and, and move it over, it's just going to, you know, it's going to fit really well there. The only problem is that with the perspective, it's, it's smaller. You see, we can see some of the other window. So that's not a problem. All you have to do is press Command T for the free transform tool. And you can make that window just a little bit bigger, bigger uh, so that it fits and replaces the old window over the stop sign. So uh, something like that. Now we have some more to correct. You know, it's kind of weird. Oh, I forgot something. This is, so if you want the corners, if you want the perspective to be respected, you can just press the Command key on your Mac or Control on Windows. You can just drag each corner, make them align like you want. And I made a test. Uh, I did that retouch and someone, I uh, came and asked him, can you see that I retouched that photo? 
and he says, yeah, you took something. I said, I took something out, find out where it was. He couldn't find where it was. So this is always my test if I did a good job or not. Okay, so now um, we have a problem because we've got some of the stop signs. So you have to go to the STEM tool, the good old STEM tool, because uh, that's uh, the content awareness. It's too complex. It's not going to do a good job. So S for STEM tool. Uh, you can use the Alt and Control key to make your STEM tool big or small. And uh, I'm just going to press the Alt key and I'm sampling the corner here. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going on the corner. Hold on. I'm sampling this corner. I'm sorry. I have to sp sample this corner and I'm meeting with that corner. All right. And then all I have to do now that I know I'm on the corner is just brush around, making sure I'm at 100 and not at 86. This way, I should be able to take that out completely and maybe here. So you see, I took the anchor point of the corner. This way, it took this out. Okay, well, it's a bit funny here, but that's fine. You just can take that corner and copy that corner there, make it like that. This is little things we can correct afterwards. Same thing here. Uh, I'm going to take that corner and copy it here. And I'm just going to go down and I'm Okay, not too much down. Command Z if you did something you don't like. And it's really, you know, it, it takes patience. But the architecture being so uh, specific in, in Paris, it's kind of hard to, uh, it's going to be a bit hard for people to find out that we did something here. I can even copy there, that. You know, it's the idea is to create an illusion. Okay, this, I can copy that corner here to make it a bit more clear. And that corner, that corner, no, uh, that corner maybe here. Okay, well, I'm not doing a good job, so I'm going to correct that. But the easiest way to correct that is just to take a pen tool, take a big chunk of wall. It, it, give, it gives you trouble, like this one. Oops. Right click, make selection, 10 pixel, put it on its own layer. Oh, make sure you are on the right layer before you press Command J. So it's really take it from that. V. And I'm just going to copy. Oh, that layer I have to put above. And uh, I'm copying that. And I can even press the. If you press the Alt key while you have the Move tool, it's just going to make another copy that I'm putting on top. This way, I'm making. I copy this wall there. So now it's, it's pretty cool. There's a bit of things I can get into, but I'm just giving you the philosophy of this. Uh, okay, now for this part, I'm going to use the STEM tool again. As for STEM tool, I'm looking at something which is very similar like this. And uh, going like this, and I'm just painting over, painting over, maybe here. Same thing here, same thing here. Oops. All right. Well, there's a bit of weird things here, but... Okay, I would probably spend 10 more minutes to do it, but you get the idea. It's just something weird there. So... Uh, you know, you can. I just can copy that. You know, same thing. Take a big chunk. Oh, my selection is not good. Command Z, Command Z. If you want to go back, Command Z several times, you just press Command Shift Z. Okay. So I'm just going to reset like that. Voila. Uh, make selection 10 radius. Okay, make sure you're on a basic layer, Command V, uh, Command G, sorry, to put it on its own layer. V for the Move tool. Put this, but you have to put, get that layer on top so that you are on top. Oh, I got some of the original things back. Okay, now I made a mistake on this one, so I'm going to erase that layer. What I should have done is just merge everything. Merge everything that I've done so far, and now I can correct that. So, so let me redo it. Because, you know, as you add collage like this, it can get pretty complex. Once you're satisfied with something, you can just merge it. This way, you're, you're sure that you're not getting some old, uncorrected photos, you know, pasted on the top of each other. So, make selection, 10, Command J, V, and move this over. Now, it's a bit too big, so Command T, and I'm just going to, you know, make it smaller so that we have a nice thing over the window. And voila, and uh, we don't have the stamp, the thing anymore, the stop sign. So now I'm going to close this. 
save it and I'm going to do just a little bit of double processing in Lightroom just a little final touch so I'm going over, going over to Lightroom it's going to re-import you see there is a stop sign and soon there will not be a stop sign okay and uh, just so double processing I'm just going to open up the shadows a bit again but not as much because it's going to go too much HDR bring down the highlights maybe a little bit of vibrance because I want it to be like reading Paris by night you know uh, like start of the night and I'm just going to make that lamp uh, I'm going to light this lamp because the town hall forgot to do it so for this I'm just putting uh, my temperature and tint the whole way to the right with a lot of exposure make this very small I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to add some lamps there okay I'm going to make a new one this one I'm going to make even stronger and in the middle I'm going to add a bit of lamp Maybe that's too much, something like that. Okay, oh, it's way too much. It's like you just turn it down, you have to look at the, but something like that, yeah. And voila, Paris by night. Hope you like it, guys, and I'll see you uh, back to me and see you for the next episode. Then. All right, guys, I hope you like this episode and I hope you like the final result. And I will see you in my next episode with my amazing team here on uh, Paris in the spring. Goodbye. <laughs>